D2DNY Real World HVAC Simplified and today I'm going to be showing you this bug view 6 no, not this bug view 6 but I'm going to be showing you this is a chiller by the way climb the coal okay so what I'm going to be showing you today Specifically, this video is about this sensor right here. It's a Centra uh, pressure differential. It says wet to wet pressure transducer. It's a pressure differential uh, transducer or sensor, if you may. And um, in our industry, HVAC will use this on water, whether it be condenser water or in this case, a chiller. Okay? So. I'm going to show you how to set it up, you know, quick run through the settings, the settings that we will use as an HVAC technician. Um, if you're a beginner, this video is for you. If you're a pro, you can also use this, you know, there's, there's going to be loads of information in this video, so I'm going to run through this sensor real quick. Um, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, uh, I would say this video is not for you unless you just want to watch it for entertainment purposes, okay? So here's the sensor in question. Let me get some light on this. Oh, that's bright. Focus the camera there. Here is the model, part number, etc. I think that's about it. Oh, there's some more information up top here. Right there. And again, this is for pros, beginners of the HVAC trade, and specifically, you know, commercial settings. If you're doing, you know, residential, this is not for you at all. And this, again, you can watch this for your uh, information and entertainment. You know, knowledge is power, right? So here we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, I got this mounted um, yesterday, installed. You know, these are the, the, uh, the sensing uh, tubes. Uh, this right here is a uh, uh, one eighth MPT by quarter inch uh, compression. And you know, this typically can hold up to, I don't know, I think 300 plus PSI. Or I think 300 PSI, 300 compression. You can Google it, you know, I'm not, you know, it's, I don't know it's good enough for this app or, um, application. Uh, you can, I am only using a, what is that right, a 60 PSI on the discharge, and uh, it's like 50 on the uh, return, all right? But these compression fittings, there's another one right there, so I got one on, that's one on my uh, suction, and another one on the discharge, all right? And that goes back into... The sensor over there clearly you can see that suction and discharge now and these compression fittings they are good for 300 i've used them on a water system uh, with uh, 300 psi um i think they can go higher than that you can go check it out research it if you like but um 300 psi is a lot of pressure so let's get into it so if you look at my back view six and this is showing the status and loads of information regarding the chiller you can see where it says flow right there yes that's chill water flow yes and we got condenser water flow yes as well okay so I'm gonna go ahead and simulate I'm gonna turn off turn off the pump just for just this demonstration purposes so you can see how that works let me get this light away from here okay I'm gonna shut the pump off now the pump is turning off, so I'm going to go back around to my uh, back view, zoom in, and you can see it says flow no, that's real time. We still have flow on the condenser side because I didn't turn off the condenser water pump. I only turned off the chill water pumps, and it says flow no over there, no, no flow right there, no flow. So let me go back again, and I'm going to uh, restart the pumps. All right, so I'm gonna go put the uh, thing back in the auto, VFD drive, just starting back up. 
and we're gonna see if we can catch it before it mix. Still says no flow. Oh, there it is, it says yes now. So that's how it works. Because on your chiller, if you have no flow on your chiller, then you know you could freeze up your chill water barrels. It's a, it's, it's a big problem. So, you know, that's a, a safety function which you want to have hooked up and functioning pronto on your chiller. So let's get into the configuration, the wiring, etc. And again, this is for HVAC. Um, this sensor can be used in different applications, but I'm only, this is an HVAC channel. We're talking about HVAC here. Okay, so if you look closely, I'm going to use my meter, test leads for pointer. If you look closely, you see that I have a wire connected, a red wire connected on this is plus or EXC, all right? Then I have another wire connected, there's a green wire connected on V out, and it V means voltage, plus means positive, all right? And um, another wire connected on the, on the, it's a black wire connected on the COM, all right? So, here's another layout of the, uh, you know, the terminal block. So you have plus, minus, and uh, V, uh, V out, or uh, out plus, and come, minus, common, minus, and then you have the zeroing uh, shorting. All right, so I guess if you short, if you put a uh, jumper between common and this terminal over the zeroing, it will zero the sensor. You can also do that from this button right here. Push that button right there and you zero the sensor. All right, these settings right here, you have uh, A, B, C, D, right? A, B, these settings right here. These are your uh, uh, difference in pressures, right? Uh, your ranges in pressures. So it will show you the settings, uh, 50 to 250, that's settings A, and uh, B, uh, 25 to 125, and so on and so forth. So based on your setup or your application, uh, you're gonna to wanna to use that, that uh, these selector switch for that. In my case, I have, I have uh, 50 and 40 PSI, uh, 50 and 60 PSI. However, this chiller, if the feedback voltage is less than 1 point, uh, I think 1.8 or, or 1.5, 1. 1, 1. It doesn't, it doesn't show flow proof. So, hence the reason why I have my settings all the way on the D, right? Because I, I want to get a higher feedback voltage out and this uh, V out on my green wire, or on my V out. So, I wanna, so right now I'm getting uh, two, close to two volts, which gives me flow proof. Um, the other switch right here, the selector right here, this is for your, uh, the type of um, signal you're using. So, in my case, I'm, uh, I am on B because my controller is looking for zero to five volts. Zero volts, obviously, that's no flow. Five volts, maximum flow. It doesn't measure it as far as rates. It just want to know yes or no. So anything above, uh, like I said, 1.5 volts, it's yes, we have flow, all right? And then uh, if you, you, you could also have a zero to 10 volts uh, signal and a, a one to five volt signal and the uh, four to 20 milliamps, okay? If, you, if, you, if that's what you're using. Um, the four to 20 milliamps, uh, this way you'll put your, uh, your, your wires and these two terminals right here, uh, plus and minus. But in the schematic I'm gonna show you in the, in the manual, there's a little, you, it's gonna require some other intervention. But let's get back to what I'm talking about here. Uh, so here, in this terminal, this red wire, I am using, so you can copy this wire for wire if you're, if you're in the HVAC field and you're working up this for 0 to 10 volts um, signal or, or, or 0 to 5 volts or even 1 to 5 volts. The only difference, a little bit, little bit of a difference if you're looking for the 4 to 20 milliamps. So this right here is actually, get my meter. So this wire right here is actually uh, the red wire, which is on V+. Plus. It's actually 24, I'm going to go, this is, this is ground, the chassis is ground right here. So I'm on the ground, you know, and that uh, plus, and you can see that I'm, I have 20, 
24 volts AC or 27 volts AC typically so that's where you put your 24 volts you can use uh, VAC or VDC doesn't matter so most likely if you're in the HVAC this is in the HVAC situation you won't have 24 volts um, AC you put 24 volts hot right there that terminal and how you know that's 24 volts hot if you go to ground with your next terminal you know ground or chassis ground and you read 24 volts you know that that your wire this wire is 24 volts hot you have to do it this way because if you don't if you put 24 volts common here the sensor will still work it will still read the problem is this output is in reference to common ground which is ground has to be uh, this com this right here has to be uh, common ground it can't be uh, 24 volts hot because if it is then it will throw off your uh, uh, your reading so it will it will what happened to when I did that when I had when I had uh, this black wire over here 24 volts common over here it makes when the pump is off and there's no flow it says uh, flow on for like uh, five seconds then it says flow off then flow on and it goes back and forth so it, gives, it was get some false reading so let's go ahead and check now I'm gonna put my my uh, my meter into a uh, DC okay and I'm gonna check my signal out because the pump is running. It's a bit tight, so I'm just gonna to go to ground because this common right here, black wire, and ground, or you know, all this is the same thing. It's common ground, right? So let me go and put it on the signal and common ground. It's gonna be a positive, positive feedback. And you can see that's 2.1 volts or two volts DC out. Now, if I go ahead, you know what? Let me go and just shut off the pumps and uh, let me see what's gonna happen to my DC out. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the pump, all right? Stop the VFD, it's gonna walk back over, quick. All right, let me go scratch the camera, see the weighted. Okay, everything is still recording. I'm gonna meet test leads. Oh man, it's kinda of tough doing this with one hand. So, I'm still in DC. Just bear with me, because I'm holding the camera and test leads okay let's go down to there we got one on the ground over here oh, come on so I'm sitting in there right boom zero volts all right so my and coupled with that zero volts you know my controller is gonna say is it still on the flow screen no it's not ah, come on let's see if we can find it see no flow so you see that is how that works so let me go and put this back on just want to point out the connectors in here for the for your pipes for your sensing pipes or tubes or inlet and outlet you can see that there's a high that's your discharge pressure or your high side pressure for your water that refrigeration or refrigerant and that's your low side or your suction side of your pump all right this is like just inlet water to your chiller are leaving the water from your chiller is going to be low based on how the pump is set up so you're going to go the discharge of the pump is high and the suction of the pump is low and you know these are your transducers and they are replaceable if you happen to uh, get this thing this thing ruined they're replaceable you can just unplug this plug take it off and you can unscrew and replace these transducers okay now this switch why would you want to replace the transducers this switch in its entirety cost two thousand dollars plus tax okay it's very expensive all right now let's go into the manual real quick here now and uh look at some of the setups i'm not going to do the entire manual but someone's going to show you some of the setups all right but in this setup here um it's similar to the setup mm, what is this one right here this is 4 to 20, or this is the milliamp setup. So you see you have your DC power supply, and um, you supply you supply power to EXC or plus. Then you have to, whatever controller you're using, if you're using milliamps, whatever controller you're using, you have to connect, it's basically connecting series from your power supply to your controller, you connect in series so plus goes into the controller minus goes into minus here 
and the current sensors from your controller was going to read, uh, do all the reading, uh, comes through and go over here at the minus. So it's you're connecting your power supply and the power from your controller in series, and then that's going to give you, you know, measure current draw. I mean, it's probably I don't know if I'm explaining it, explaining it, explaining it the right way or. So a way for you to understand but if you know this kind of thing and you look at it right here you'll understand just just the way this thing is wired power supply this this uh most likely is going to be a load and power supply through your load uh back into the device um it's going to be a steady voltage but varying current draw all right and that current draw is 0 to 20 milliamps here you have this shunt or short just a regular open close switch for your zeroing, all right? I would say this is the most complex of the configuration for the milliamp. Uh, when you're using the other three options, zero to five, zero to 10, and one to five, those are pretty straightforward, it's way easier. So here you have your power supply. In my case, it's not DC. You can use DC and you can use AC, 24 volts. So you can use 24 volts DC or AC. So in this case, this is my 24 volts hot. Goes into V, uh, goes into plus, just like I showed you on the controller. And when I told you that the common has to be common, this is the reason why. Because the common here is referencing to the DC out. The, DC, uh, the V out is positive DC signal. And it's in reference to this common. So if, if, if you take this wire and put it over here from your, tr your transformer, 24 volts hot over here, it's going to still work, but there's going to be some interference. All right? So how do you know which is your D, uh, uh, 24 volts common? Uh, you put your tester on your transformer, um, two wires, and you go from each wire on, on voltage to ground. I'll demonstrate in a little bit. And um, if you go to chassis ground, anyone that reaches 24 volts to ground, that's your 24 volts hot. The other is going to be your common. All right, so this is how you do that. And then you can see the voltage out plus going back into your controller. And um, that's what it is right here. Again, 24 volts power, uh, 24 volts common. All right, pretty straightforward. These two wires here, okay, or this wire right here, all you're doing is shorting this wire, which is the zeroing to common and the sensor will zero uh, if you want you can do that remotely if you want you can wire this in remote and so you can have the ability to make the sensor zero zero it out remotely but you can just come and press this button right here uh, yeah pretty much that's pretty much it now some of the other settings we have over here you can uh, look at how you're measuring your pressures is it PSI or bars all right I don't think that's much uh, really relevant unless you're able to look at this reading on a screen and you're trying to convert it on a, on a BMS or BAS system. But uh, yeah, so you there's a jumper, these jumpers right here on the side. You can see all of my pins are to the right. So I'm on PSI, I am on uh, forward reverse, I am on normal, the forward and, and then and then you have the fast acting, slow acting, I am on fast, you have the bidirectional unidirectional, I am on a unidirectional, and then you have the, what is this one here? You have the swap, and you have normal, I am in normal. So, these are three point uh, pins. You pull it up, you pick it up, and you move it either left or right. So I'm always, I'm all the way to the right right now. Everything is on the right hand side. For me, that's my settings here. Everything is to the right. 